This is Jay Richards with the Discovery Institute. We're here at the COSM Conference in the Seattle area. Uh, and I'm pleased to be able to be joined by Craig Mundy, who's actually just spoken. Uh, he's at Mundy & Associates, but of course he was at the Microsoft Corporation for many years. Uh, we're going to talk to him just a, kind of a, a little bit about what he just talked about. Craig, thanks for joining me. Okay, good to be here with you. Well, so give us a, you know, sort of a synopsis of what you just talked to, to the, the conference here. Uh, well, synopsis is, I think there are a few big trends that are happening. Uh, really big computers that are good at, at doing artificial intelligence type things are, mm -hmm. are emerging and continue to grow fast. Uh, we have n the arrival of uh, new molecular assays, in particular proteomic assays in the biomedical field. Uh, and we have, we're on the road at least, to, to try to build an artificial general intelligence. Each of those is interesting in their own right, mm -hmm. uh, but when I looked at them together, I thought it created the basis of thinking about a completely new way to move toward a future of medicine that would be completely personalized. Right. And by combining the, the artificial general intelligence to, to build a model of human biology uh, and then use the human biologic model to, uh, to figure out new ways to practice medicine and even to regulate medicine such that it became individualized. So what do you realistically think is going to need to be modeled for this to happen? Well, I think you ha the problem is you need to model all of human biology. <laughs> And, and in my opinion, human biology is too complicated for humans. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just too right. complicated. And so the question is, is it possible that a machine could in fact understand it all because of the machine's ability to ingest this at, in incredible detail mm -hmm. and at scale, and therefore could it learn a model of biology that's too complicated for humans to write down and express themselves? You said something interesting and provocative uh, in there because, of course, when many people hear in, among the public, you hear artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence. We have this, you know, the Skynet image or um, HAL 9000 or something like that. But you said really, at, at least in the modern era, when we're talking about this, we're talking about a, kind of a glorified machine uh, learning or something like that. What do you mean? No, I, well, I think today most of the things that people call AI are mm -hmm. really just advanced machine learning capabilities. They're not trying to build a general intelligence. Right. And you could add a thousand of them together and it doesn't make it smart. Mm -hmm. It just means that there's a thousand things that it's been trained to do. So the goal of a general intelligence really is to have something, if you will, that's smarter, that it has expertise in many domains and can reason across them as opposed to just be you know, good at a thousand little individual things. Uh, you know, the, the dream is that we can actually make the, this such that it it rivals human intellect. Um, and, and yes, many people, you know, from science fiction writers, you know, to, to others, you know, ha have talked about dystopian outcomes that, mm -hmm. that might emerge. You can say, I'm much more pragmatic. One, I think that these things, you know, as is true with m most other technologies, are dual, dual use. I mean, you can, they do tremendous good, and yes, mm -hmm. some people can do, you know, some sure. bad things with them too. So I'm on the good guy side. Uh, and I want to use it as early as possible to do something that is good for all of humanity, which mm -hmm. is come up with an economical way to, to provide wellness and health care for a global population uh, as quickly as possible. And so I don't know, I don't even need to know whether or if we'll get to the point where this thing has true general intellect, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty convinced that we're going to be able to achieve mastery of enough domains in a single machine that it will solve problems that humans can't solve. And the one I want to solve is health. Hmm. Absolutely, and are you, are you optimistic that uh, we're going to reach that in you know, 10, 20 years? I mean, if you speculate a little bit. Uh, you know, I think it's very difficult to, to predict you know, when we're going to get to this sort of true general intellect sure. in a machine. Um, but I, I think we're going to be able you know, in somewhere around, I'll say, the, the 10 to 20 year time horizon, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to start to see the, the capabilities emerge to solve at least the class of problems I'm talking about. So what do you think will be the first sort of tough problems that you think could be solved? I mean, a lot of people want to talk about, you know, unlimited lifespan and things like that. Are you thinking about discrete diseases, cancer, well, you know, reduced mortality curve, something like that? Well, I think it, the way I express it is, Every person is different. Mm. You know, so the real question is, can we improve life outcomes for every individual? 
uh, in an economical way. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you do that, then you know, I think you've helped everything <laughs> no matter what. Uh, and I don't have to sort of measure it you know, by achieving any one thing. Right. I think if we can build a, a proteomic-based uh, proxy for you know, human biology and, or the state of any person, uh, and I think, and that is now clearly possible. Mm -hmm. It's that has just happened in the last year or so. Uh, then, then I think we can do all kinds of optimizations using that thing as our simulation engine, mm -hmm. and that'll allow us to do drug discovery. Uh, it'll allow us to, you know, understand disease as as more than problems in any one organ, but but you know the the interconnectedness of these things in in the human system, and. Uh, and from that, I think we'll be able, you know, to improve healthcare even as we know it today, mm -hmm. uh, and and hopefully move us down the path to being able to, to customize it for every person. Well, I, a lot of policy people that think about this think about the kind of regulatory hurdles to the sort of thing that you're talking about. And you mentioned at the end uh, your hope for a way to sort of uh, to, to, to restructure the regulatory regime to be able to take account of this new kind of medicine. How do you describe that? Well, I think. To me, the analogy is, you know, take any one of these systems, you know, that humans have worked on for decades or longer, you know, where you can think, I call it, you know, there's, there's BC and AC. That's mm -hmm. before computer <laughs> and after computer. Right. So, I mean, we've been middle and bridges since the Romans, you know, and before. Yeah. Um, and as we made them bigger and bigger, sometimes they'd work and sometimes they'd fall down. Or sometimes the wind would blow and they'd oscillate and fall mm -hmm. down. And then along came computer modeling, you know, and, and uh, of these mechanical systems. And now we can design builder and build bigger bridges and buildings that use less material and are still strong enough and they don't blow down. So the problem is we don't have any way to do that kind of modeling for human biology. Right. And as a result, the regulators don't have anything except experimenting on people or proxies for people like mm -hmm. animals and other things with which to make these decisions. And of course, all that is antithetical, you know, to doing it for an individual. Right. You know, you can't experiment on a bunch of people with a drug that's only going to be designed to work for you. And and so my dream is that by building an AI-based model that has learned human biology from human biology yeah. uh, uh, through these assays, molecular assays, that that would become a trusted way for a regulatory agency to practice a, a form of regulatory science that would then allow the determinations of safety and efficacy and economics you know, to be rationalized even at a per person basis. This is great stuff. Thanks for, for opening the conference with such an optimistic and hopeful okay. talk. Thanks for joining Pleasure. us. Thank you. This is Jay Richards at Discovery Institute at the COSM Conference. <laughs> <laughs>